just thought I'd give a close-up of the keyboard. Um, it's actually pretty gross. I don't even know what that is. But I'm going to take the outer case off and try to do some cursory cleaning without removing the keys. Usually I only remove the keys if I want to retro bright them. Otherwise I leave them alone, so. Yeah, I mean, I, I imagine I should be able to clean this with a toothbrush and some of that uh, purple cleaner stuff. So maybe, maybe we're going to avoid even taking the, taking the case off and try to clean it. I do have compressed air, so that's my friend here. I'm going to obviously get moisture down inside the keyboard. But using compressed air, I'm hoping to remove all of it when I'm done. So that's what I'm going to try to do. So I'm out in the garage and I decided to clean it on a relatively, I'm using the hood of, a, of my old Cougar. Um, <laughs> so I decided to hold it upside down. You know, all the moisture is obviously going to follow gravity. And uh, yeah, put a towel under it. Wow, jeez. You think of all the dirt and stuff that's underneath, you know, where I can't get to because I'm not taking the case off. It's an interesting experiment though. It's funny, I have to show you something though. Like, I don't know if you could see that, but yeah, you can. <laughs> all the dirt's, you know, getting onto the, the rag towel I have. So it's just going to be a lot of repetition of this same deal here. Yeah, I think I came up with a good idea. Um, distilled water. Yeah, I just need to do that a little more because there's soap that's trapped between the keys. Although holding it upside down, I'm sure kept water from getting into a good portion of it. The water still got inside, obviously. So, and the water that's coming out, yeah. I just can't clean this properly without taking it apart. Yeah, right decision. You see that? I mean, I can't claim to have cleaned this thing if I left that in place, right? So, and this will be much better for me trying to blow the thing off. 
uh, when I'm done. So. Yeah, so I mean I can take, what's good about the way I'm gonna do this is if I can push the air this way, I can get under the keys really well. And uh, yeah. I'm going at it with the air now. It's not gonna 100% completely remove all of the moisture out of here. So uh, putting this into a cool dry place, probably putting it upside down, or actually like this probably, so that the water will will come out. And get the circuit board too. There shouldn't have been much water getting down in there. The keyboards are designed to pre prevent water mostly from getting to where the circuit board is. Keys are looking a lot better. Anyway. That looks really nice. The cord, the cord is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. You can actually get a telephone handset cord and it'll work. So if you happen to find one of the right size or my friend Brad does, then he's good to go. See, what? I, that's really weird. Um, Let me just, do we have a dead key on the keyboard? Because it's not, uh, it's not, that Amiga, ooh, there's your problem. <clears throat> I thought I tested all the keys on this thing, but maybe I didn't. Uh-oh. <laughs> so we got some, we got some dead keys. I better write this down. I, I'm thinking of my A1200 video where I tested all the keys. I actually forgot to test all the keys on this bad boy. So we've got some some dead keys. Yeah, they they just need a cleaning. And I just took this keyboard about apart to clean it on the outside. Now I need to take it apart further to clean it on the inside. So F3. The right Amiga key looks like it's just a bad con oops well what happened here the energy just stuck down Okay. Geez, how did I miss that? Enter key sticks. Jeez. I, uh, the I key. Six. E. See, they eventually work. <sighs> S. F. H. J. Front slash. Alt. Geez, I had no idea.
I had no idea that there was a problem with the keyboard. Well, that explains it. So, uh, yeah. I'm going to take the keyboard apart and see if I can uh, figure out what's going on. So, I've taken one of these apart before. Yeah, there's this metal EMI shield that's got to come off first. Jeez, that was some kind of funky smell. Strange. Okay, and this thing's held on with double sided tape. That's cute. Let's see. These keys are individually soldered in, and that's what holds them in here. So, for instance, if you needed to separate the back plate from the circuit board, you'd have to remove every single one of these keys. You have to desolder every single one of them. That's pretty rough, right? Man, this, this, there's a smell to this. I kind of a goofy. Anyway, so at least I only have to remove the, uh, the ones that aren't working. So let me get my desoldering gun. Make some room here. Okay. Let's start with the F keys. F3 key. loose. Oh yeah, it's ready to come out. There we go. Ah, yeah. Okay, so this looks interesting over here, and you're thinking that it's got some kind of uh, some kind of catch or something over here. This is a red herring, is what this is. So on the sides here, you have the place where it it latches on to the frame. You know, when when the key's inserted, it clips in right here. And what it's really hard to spot is. Uh, these little fingers that are here on the sides and there's a a gap right there too seemingly to uh, allow you to for that piece to flex to snap the key in and out of the frame but in the on the same side there are these two fingers one right here and one right here that are latched that are keeping the two the two halves of this key so something larger and trying to keep it in focus my focus uh, depth of field is very shallow 
because I'm using magnification. So I've slid this underneath and I'm kind of pushing the key up on this side. Okay, I'm going to do the same thing over here. And there we go. Ooh, there's a spring that wants to pop out right under there. That's the spring. Gee, I wonder if the return key... No, it feels like the return key is just sticky. Looks like I didn't. So this comes down. This comes down and slides there and then those guys make contact. Now this is interesting. Okay, I don't know if I can get this shown very well, but let me get a pointing device. But what's happening, I figured I figured that these two get it in focus here. That these two tangs here you know, pushed down and made contact, but all this is is a big mechanical arm. And what it's doing is, is it's it's got a little button underneath it. You know, a, a, a dimple has been pushed into it. And that dimple pushes down on this lever, this plastic lever. And there's actually a metal, a piece of metal that is uh, this piece right here that's connected to this lead. It's actually bent over. And so there's a piece of this metal that's bent over and going underneath. And so when you press down on the key, the key slides down here, pushes these down, pushes the dimple in, and, um, sorry, I'm looking at this backwards so it's hard for me to, and makes a connection in this area back here. It causes that, that piece of metal that's running all the way under here, a thin piece of metal, to make contact with this one right here. So. Okay, so I have my multimeter set up here. So pushing down on this should make a connection, but it doesn't. So or at least not very well. So I have some contact cleaner. Instead of taking this apart, I mean you, taking this apart would mean bending these tabs over, and I just don't even want to go there. So Kind of tells you right there that this stuff is non-conductive, doesn't it? So... Yeah. I have to pretty much put it back together in order to... Yeah, this is pretty fiddly. Pretty fiddly. See if we have any, uh, there we go. <clears throat> so with the keycap off and this, this cover over it, is it very accessible? Well, we've got this blue piece here. Let me see what part of this I can see. And we've got our contacts on this side too. So, uh, it may be adequate enough to spray contact cleaner down there. Oops, pushed it up. It 
But with this cover on, I mean, come on. So we're going to spray down this side of this and do this a bunch of times and then we can, that way we don't have to take the keys out, I guess. See what I'm doing, I'm putting it back into the keyboard. And it needs to be re-soldered back in. Okay, I put the plastic, I got the plastic back on there. Um, so on the side, but I can still see. So on the side that has the contacts, I'm gonna spray contact cleaner down there and operate the key a bunch of times. And, uh, but I need to start with pulling keys out. So I'm gonna get my key puller to do that. Okay, <clears throat> so let's look at the six key. The six key has the contacts over here. So we're gonna squirt in there. And the I key, which is here, I think they're all kind of on the right side, all the contacts. Probably. S key, same thing I believe. I guess I could get you in there just a little closer. The closer I get you in, the narrower of focus I have. It's really easy to, to get it out of focus at that point. And then the H and the J are both on the right side too. Same thing, and front slash is the same, and the Amiga is the same. So that all the connection pins are on the right side, underneath side of the key. All right, let's see how we do here. Let's see how we did. sure if I can get this to focus with my lens adapter. That's okay. All right, keyboard is F2. So it's F3. Couldn't get that one to work at all. Six. We're good. I. I think we might have some... Yeah. pressing that one. These ones look good though. So another tip. Use contact cleaner. Operate the key a bunch. And these weren't working at all or very well just even just now but hitting them a bunch of times. That one's good. Just cleaning it up. Control Amiga Amiga. Just make sure we're doing okay with these keys. F2's keyboard. Yeah, so top tip for these are all the ones that didn't work very well. I missed one to test all of them. And because this contact cleaner seems to be non-conductive, at least according to my continuity tester, <clears throat> we can do this with the computer on. This is CRC contact cleaner. Works like a charm. What's nice about it is... Come on. Needs another treatment. 
what's nice about it is, is it, it's it's uh, ether based, you know, and it and it will um, evaporate pretty quickly. Let's go back to that. Let's see. Oh, the return key still sticks down. I got to do something about that. V needs another treatment. Down key. Yeah. Doesn't work at all. So we're just going to squirt this in here. Now, if, if this was conductive, if this spray was conductive, it would be shorting it right now. Oh, that's interesting. This key, this down arrow, may require more... May, I may have to actually have to remove this one. Because it's not... Let's see, am I on the right side for that? Yeah, I am. Let's just try it one more time here. Oh, there we go, it came to life. Let's give it one more treatment. So safe to use um, on active electronics, apparently. Probably read the instructions, huh? Yeah, that one's gonna cause me some grief, I think. Very good. F. So you could actually do this without even taking the case off of the keyboard. You just pull the key off with everything together squirt some electronic cleaner and again the the contacts are on the right side so just spray it down the right side it seems to be on the right side with every one of these this only goes for the Amiga 1000 keyboard of course so it just goes to show you you know you, you have to figure figure things out. You have to take something apart to figure out how it works. And then that'll give you clues to how, you know, maybe you can, you won't have to take it apart next time completely or as much, or it won't be as difficult to do so. So in this case, we definitely have an example of taking something apart to see how it works and then using that information to make it so we don't have to take a desolder or take anything else apart. We can just squirt contact cleaner down the appropriate side that we know that we now have the knowledge of and um, save ourselves some time effort and you know it's the empirical method or whatever so now we just have one remaining problem the enter key is likes to stick down so that's gonna kind of be a gonna gonna be kind of a pain to get out. Um, just zoom out a little bit because it's got one. Of, I usually I take the bigger keys out that have the bars um, when the other keys aren't in place around them. It's kind of tough to deal with these like this, but. Um, oh yeah, huh, yeah, there's the one, uh, this thing has two plungers, two keys, two uh, switches, it looks like. 
one of them might just be a spring-loaded thing. Um, okay, there we go. This one is... <laughs> I mean, it's not going to pop up with just one of these working. This one doesn't... Uh, doesn't pop up. It's not stuck. It's just acting like there's no spring in there. So that one's going to have to come out. Um, because it's different, I mean, does it have a contact on it or can I just pull this out? I think I might be able to just pull this out without... Yay! Okay, cool. This one actually isn't an electrically connected. It's just serving one purpose. To help the enter key uh, come back up. So, uh, yeah, that's interesting. So it's like an empty version of, of one of the regular ones. It doesn't, but it needs a spring. I mean, how's it going to come back up? It really kind of seems like it doesn't have a spring in it. Is it possible that, um, that it's not supposed to have a spring and it's just there for some kind of stability or something? Which would mean that the spring that's in the um, in here is not being effective enough. Oh, I do have another A1000 keyboard. Let me just grab that because it would be pretty easy to compare them. So here is my A1000 keyboard and let's see if that second, and this, you know, works good. Let's see if that second one, second faux switch is supposed to have a spring. No, it's not. These uh, slots are looking pretty crusty. That's another thing, if, the, if that bar, that stabilizer bar, whatever it is, is not able to move freely. It will it will cause binding, and the key won't return. And there's some crud in there. It's almost like if you, it kind of looks like it. There was a paste in there or something like something. You don't want to lube this part. Definitely not. If you've watched my other videos, you know that the uh, you hear running water in the background. It's the cat fountain. It's kind of close to where I'm sitting. There's actually a door that can separate, but sometimes I forget to close it before I start filming. All right, let's give that a try. like we might have figured it out. Yeah, that's what it was. It was those little plastic things that hold the, the stabilizer bar. Okay, that takes care of the, uh, the return key issue.